Hey guys, Ben94Z here, back again today with another Blender tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to bump map your textures from your 3D models. Uh, I'll be using GIMP, which is free image editing software. I'll, I'll leave a link to download GIMP in the description of this video. Uh, first off, I'm gonna open up Blender. I got the new version of Blender. It, was, it came out on the 28th of Feb, so yeah, I don't know what all the new features are, but uh, there's always something new about Blender. Uh, I'm just going to simply unwrap this. I'm not going to do anything too tricky. Uh, let's go to the UV. See, that's, that's my unwrap. It's nothing too special. I'm just going to show you guys. I'm going to be focusing on the, the bump mapping side of things and not so much the unwrapping all that stuff this will be a bump mapping tutorial tab out of that let's minimize there and open up GIMP here it is so I've downloaded myself an image from the web uh, you can find wood textures through Google images or whatever your preference is I just typed in uh, wood texture you can probably type in uh, timber texture or um, yeah I, I just went with this it was one of the first results uh, let's it's only 500 by 500 pixels so it's it's not like heaps of quality but I'm just demonstrating in this tutorial I'm not making really fancy art to show off to anyone so I'm going to right click here and click duplicate. I'm going to hide this layer behind. And with this layer, I'm going to go ahead and click colors, desaturate over here. And you've got three choices here. Um, I would choose luminosity, but depending on your image, it might be a different story. Just pick your fancy. I can't see the difference between any of these three, but with something like this, I would choose luminosity because there seems to be more contrast with the balance. Okay, let's go back to colors here. And what we've got is levels. So with levels, uh, we've got this graph here, supposedly displaying our color values. And we've got these little little arrows that we can we can change around so this middle dial we're gonna try and find the sweet spot with the middle dial but make sure you set these front and back arrows to the point on the graph where it just seems to scale up like it just seems to really pick up here so I'm gonna set it there if I was to set it here I would lose a lot of colors or shading you want it to be black and white because with a bump map, it doesn't matter what color it is because it's not going to affect. It's not going to affect um, the the detail that's going to be on applied on top of the texture because it's. I think it's mostly um, like the depth of the color, like the darkness. Because when you turn red black and white and you turn color like blue black and white they pretty much look the same so it'd be a bit untheoretical using colors as something that you know affects the bump map uh, so we want to find that sweet spot because this is you know this has got gaps between this wood or at least with this texture I'm using I kind of want the gaps to be filled Yeah, that might be a bit too extreme. It depends how much detail you really want. But I actually might go with this, even though it seems like a bit a bit hardcore. Ooh, that's pretty hardcore too. Uh, only because these spots here seem to really um, 
they really seem to stick together with the darkness so if i was to put that there you got these little white speckles here and they if when you come when it comes to bump mapping or applying the bump map in blender those are going to show through and it's not going to really look very realistic so i think i'll go with this i'll try this out okay you can even you know mix multiple ones together you know what i'm saying you can you can stack them on top of each other and then it's all about having a play sometimes and then we can change this to about 50 percent and then you know uh but i'm just going to use this one yeah, maybe put that to 25. There you go. Okay, let's go file, export. And we're gonna name this the same name and then put bump. I just put bump under, I mean, behind the same texture name because uh, bump is easier to type and it stands for bump map. And you click export don't worry about any of these check boxes just go export make sure compression level is at the same uh, the same one as what the original image was so you want that fully out i'm pretty sure click export we can close down gimp actually if you want to save your file in gimp you go file and save or save as and then it saves as uh x what does it save as xcf images yeah that's the name for a GIF, uh, GIMP file, sorry. Let's go back into Blender. We've got our texture over here. Uh, so let's make ourselves a new material. We're gonna name this text. The texture. Uh, I don't know what that's doing there, but I'm gonna kill it. And click new. And I'm gonna open the original colored texture firstly and we're going to make sure the map is it's a set to the right map we're going to click here and click new um, click the right map again and open up the black and white bump map image of the wood so we've got here this is important we uncheck the color and now under geometry we click the checkbox on normal uh, on normal so now we're gonna uh, right click on the object and then go to tab and we're gonna assign our material there and because we're in solid view we can't see our material so we're gonna click material here and then oh well we can see our material that's pretty intense yeah See those little white speckles? That's all to do with the specular. So I'm gonna change that to a blin. And I may as well change the specular around to maybe like a light brown. Okay. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Now it seems pretty intense and it doesn't look too appealing right now. I think that's because our geometry set to one and we might want to set this to minus 0.25. Check and that's looking a bit better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I say that looks a bit better. I'm not sure if minus is forward or backwards with the geometry here, so. 0.25 yeah I can't tell the difference yeah, that might be still too much as it is Point one, two, five. Point one, two, five. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 
I probably... I've probably missed a lot of detail from the wood, actually, um, using this like that. I went with something that's way too intense, so I'm going to go back into GIMP, quickly make a new texture. I was just trialing that, but I'll be quick. Here we go. Colors, desaturate, luminosity, and then we're going to go colors, levels, and let's bring that there, there, and I think it's reached 450, yeah, there, and I might even change the output levels a bit. Okay, let's go save as, no, not save as, export as, and I'm going to re-export over the same one here, and I'll show you a cool trick that Blender has when you do stuff like that you've got um, you've got this selected and you notice how I saved it I saved it as the same file name we can just click this this button here and then it's going to re-update it so uh, that's got a little bit more detail to it so I can apply more more pressure to the to the bump map so we can go 0.25 and yeah it looks like a tree it looks like wood wouldn't you think anyways guys thanks a lot for watching this tutorial leave in the comment section anything if you want to know about it um, I'll, for the next tutorials I'll be doing I'll be doing uh, rigging and weight painting so with this blender basics tutorial series yeah i'm just gonna show you like the basics of pretty much everything in blender all the way through and then once you want to get a little bit um a little bit more into blender you're gonna have to check out some advanced tutorials in blender but i have no problems in directing you guys to the right places for things this tutorial series is just about getting people in the right direction for starting with, you know, Blender and using it, getting used to 3D, textures, all that jazz. Once again, thanks guys, and I'll see you around.